Regression is defined on Wikipedia as a set of statistical processes for estimating relationships between a dependent variable or outcome and one or more independent variables, which we may refer to as predictors or features. Regression is not limited to predicting continuous outcomes, but you will hear the term most frequently in that context. So we will train our model by mapping input features x to continuous y. As an example scenario with continuous response, we can try to predict house prices given some number of input features. One type of regression model would fit a line to this data. How would we learn the parameters? Before continuing, let's introduce a normal distribution. You'll encounter this distribution frequently in statistics and various fields of science. It has two parameters, mu and sigma squared. Mu controls the mean of the distribution, while sigma squared is the variance, which controls the spread. This is the PDF of the normal distribution for a given mean and standard deviation. The leading term here serves to normalize it so it integrates to 1. If we plot the PDFs of a couple different normal distributions with different mean and variance, we see that increasing the mu parameter shifts the curve to higher x values, and increasing variance increases the spread, whereas decreasing these parameter values will result in shifting to the left and making the curve narrower. Now let's start with the expression we derived in the last video for supervised learning and we'll focus on the first term only. This is equivalent to assuming the other probabilities are uniform. When dealing with regression problems, we will frequently assume that our outputs given x and theta follow a normal distribution with mean around our model predictions and some variance sigma squared. This is equivalent to saying that we assume that errors in our predictions will be normally distributed. Under this assumption, p of yi given xi and theta is a normal PDF evaluated at yi for a distribution with parameters as shown. Substituting into our formula of the PDF, we will get the following equality. In the next proof, we will take sigma to be constant, or at least constant with respect to model parameters. This will allow us to drop some terms and arrive at the typical final optimization problems introduced to students learning about regression. Given the first term in our optimization problem, we will now make the assumption that our errors are normal and plug in the normal PDF as discussed earlier. Using the properties of the logarithm, we will separate out the coefficient into its own term. Notice that we took sigma to be constant with respect to theta, therefore we can drop this first term to form an equivalent optimization problem. Now in the term left over, the log and the exponential will cancel. Let's separate out any constants from this expression. We can flip the sign on our term and use argmin instead of argmax, giving another equivalent problem. Let's drop the constants again. This results in the term being optimized taking the form shown. This is referred to as the sum of squared errors, since it's the sum of differences between labels yi and predictions f sub theta of xi. We could stop here but we can introduce a constant 1 over n where n is the number of examples in our dataset to arrive at what is called mean squared error. Notice that we know quantities xi, f sub theta, yi, and n, so this is a concrete quantity that we can calculate and minimize over using different optimization techniques, given that we made the assumptions to arrive at this term. We don't necessarily need to make the assumption that our prediction errors are normally distributed, although it might be a natural assumption to make. We could instead assume that they are Laplace distributed. The Laplace distribution has a mean parameter mu and parameter b which is referred to as diversity, 
which also controls the distribution scale like we saw for sigma squared with a normal distribution. The distribution has a different PDF, which looks somewhat similar to the normal distributions, but when plotting it, you can see a distinctly different shape with more density near the mean. You can follow a similar derivation to what was shown earlier and arrive at the optimization problem of minimizing a term referred to as the mean absolute error. Both the mean squared error and mean absolute error are frequently taught as quantities to minimize to train regression models. Now you have seen where they come from and how to derive them.